Okay. Well, I thank everyone for coming out, and we're going to try to give you as much up-to-date information as we can from um, yesterday's fire at United Industries. I first want to start out by thanking our fire department. They did a phenomenal job yesterday, and I really cannot say enough uh, thank you to all of them. We are also very appreciative of the Rogers and Bella Vista fire departments for helping us as well. Our police department um, was uh, had the traffic under control and securing the area. We would like to also recognize uh, that we had about 3,600 customers out with electric and our electric department within about two hours had everybody back up. Um, and then also our water department was on scene to monitor the pressure flow and coordinate with Beaver Water Service. The Salvation Army was here to help mobilize a response team and they supplied us water and snacks for our crews. Um, we have state and federal agencies that have come in to help us with the fire investigation. We, we serve, and some of them are some standing behind me and we'd like to say thank you to them as well. We'd also like to say thank you to our, the media for giving a timely response and getting um, good information out to the public. Um, and uh, when you have an incident like happened uh, yesterday, it's really humbling and you can kind of reflect upon that and say, um, definitely want to say thank you to um, our city and then also the community for the response. Um, we didn't have to, to make calls. People were calling us on, on how they can and help help us. So we want to say thank you for that. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our fire chief, Chief Winston. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, give you some updates <clears throat> on the fire 1126 yesterday. We got a call for a fire outside this building. Uh, by the time we got there, that fire had spread. It was still outside the structure. We kept it outside of the structure the entire time. The black smoke was from star foam sheets that were burning, and everybody knows it burns hot and fast. The investigation, we have called in the Arkansas State Fire Marshal's Office and the ATF. They've assisted us with the investigation this morning. They have gathered a lot of information and it is still under investigation at this time. There won't be any release of anything that's under investigation. Anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you talk about the smoke, whether or not there was anything toxic that was released in the air? Uh, I can bring up our operations chief, Deputy Kevin Boydston, here in a minute. We can talk about that. I can tell you that we have had no body with any symptoms or complaints give us a call at all. Yes, sir? Could you talk about just what role the ATF plays in this investigation? Well, the ATF has definitely got a lot of resources if we needed them. Uh, the ATF comes in if you have a fire of this magnitude. It's always best to get a couple extra set eyes on what we're looking at and we all work together it's been very good working relationship all morning with them and the arkansas state police um, can you talk about the specifics about what your firefighters did yesterday and kind of how you train for situations like this this doesn't obviously doesn't happen very often uh yes ma'am we we train every day that we have act that we're able to we go out we get structures that we train on uh, this one, the type of fire, one of our biggest objectives was the exposures. That is keeping it out of the building. If it's outside, let's keep it outside. Uh, manning monitors, you know, the smoke, we have to wear our air pack still at that time, and just producing a lot of water. And that's where Mayor Orman was talking about the water department. We were in contact with them all day to make sure that we had the supply that we were pumping out. We were pumping a lot of water yesterday. How long did you have crews out here until it was 100% uh, extinguished? Uh, the crews were probably extinguished probably somewhere around 5.30. We had somebody on scene all night. I left here about a quarter till 7. Did you have any issues yesterday with a lot of onlookers? Obviously, the smoke we've seen from miles away where people getting in the way of you guys doing job? Not with us doing our job, and that's... Uh, Thanks to our Bentonville Police Department, they took care of the outer lying areas and made sure the traffic stayed moving up and down the street so we could even get some extra resources from Rogers and Bella Vista in here. Um, can you talk, I don't know if you can talk about this, but a little bit about the cleanup that's happening um, and kind of what's, what are the next steps? 
Uh, the cleanup that's going on right now, United Industry has hired a company to do that. And uh, I have not talked to them, so I couldn't comment much on it. Uh, any kind of timeline for the investigation at this point? No, ma'am, I sure don't. A lot of, lot of information that's got to be gone through, uh, analyzed, and then they will get back with us as soon as it is. Yes, uh, Rogers brought an aerial over and a rescue truck with it. They assisted with uh, elevated streams for us. Bella Vista came in with an ambulance and a fire truck also. They assisted with the sprinkler system on the building itself. Is arson still on the table in this case? I will say there's nothing criminal that we're looking into. Okay. This time I'll turn it over to uh, Operations Chief Deputy Kevin Boydston and talk about the cleanup and what's going on in that aspect. Good afternoon. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Do you yes. You know, to, to begin with, whenever you see smoke, it's toxic. That's, that's why our firefighters are protected the way that they are, and that's why we go to such extreme lengths on our cancer prevention. And our objective is always keep everyone out of the smoke. In this particular case, what we're talking about with the product that was burning, what does it, what is its residue? Uh, you know, the heat we're talking about, the power lines that melted, takes over 1,200 degrees to do that. And so we're talking temperatures well over 1,200 degrees. Uh, the bulk of the chemicals uh, that comprise those uh, beads uh, is consumed, uh, but what you can end up with is some styrene monomers uh, and lots of carbon monoxide, and that's what we look for. So what we do when we go downwind and we test in the area, we test for uh, what's called VOCs, organic chemicals, and we test for carbon monoxide, oxygen levels, and things of that nature. And due to the intensity of the fire upon our arrival, if you've seen any pictures of the plumes, it was a rapid rate of rise. Uh, by the time it, it cleared any vacant property, it was well over 200 feet in the air. And there's nothing we can do about that. That's just the way it works. So what we do is, is we stay focused on keeping anyone out of the smoke if there is, and then we also continue to go downwind and we monitor for those same chemicals I just told you about. And uh, we worked with uh, ADEQ Air yesterday, as well as the Department of Health on their air, uh, and are sharing all of our meter readings uh, with them, and at no point in time were we running any carbon monoxide or any volatile organic chemicals. So, any ADEQ didn't test. We did. Okay. We 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 do those capabilities, and what they do is is they let us know if they think that's sufficient or not. So. Sure, we, we used in excess of a half a million gallons of water, but that didn't all go to ground. Uh, what happens to the bulk of that water, uh, and we're going to have to do calculations as we complete our report, uh, the bulk of that water is vaporized. It's turned into steam. With, those kinds of, with that kind of heat, uh, you don't have a lot of water hitting the ground. But you do have some, and, and yes, we worked with uh, a local contractor. They helped us out. Uh, one of the things that we were conscious of was our runoff right from the beginning with our pre-plans that our marshals do on, this, on these structures is we realize that when we go to put the fire out, and that's where our big concern is, is when we go to put it out. That's when we start knocking everything down. That's where we're going to get a lot of runoff. Uh, we're fortunate that we're surrounded by a construction site. This construction site had a massive, massive uh, detention pond, and uh, we were able to plug that pond and in visiting with the cleanup contractor today, as well as my conversations with uh, Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality, uh, Water Division, and their on-site personnel, uh, we kept it all on private property. Nothing emitted beyond that I on the runoff. Sorry, I know yesterday uh, there was concerns about a propane tank, um, and uh, yes. the temperature getting too high. Yes. Can you talk about that for a second? I will. Uh, that was not propane. However, it's similar. It's, it's a compressed. It's a compressed gas, compressed down to the point like propane. It's a liquid. And in understanding, uh, when I gave the temperatures, uh, these tanks have pop-off valves. So they'll, when they start to get too hot, 
they'll start to release vapor. Okay, and that, and that that is a is a significant sign that we need to do something quick, or we're going to have to evacuate the area. Our goal yesterday was to cool that tank down, uh, keep it below 125 degrees, which it never got over 95. Uh, to prevent that 135 to 165 degree temperature of, of uh, setting off that pop-off valve and starting to release vapors. Uh, had we not been able to maintain that temperature or cool it down, which by the way, the crews did a great job uh, on keeping water on that. Uh, temperatures for the fire was out on well, that tank was 65 degrees. Uh, we used a, a remote uh, aerial drone uh, with thermal imaging capabilities. Uh, that gave us continual reads on the temperature, so we were able to monitor that the whole time. So we had no release. The, even the relief valves didn't activate on that tank. Going back to the health topic on this, yesterday, yeah. all the reporters who were out here and they came back to the station, yes, sir. headaches, today they're coughing. You know, uh, looking forward, should anybody who was out here and all this be worried about long-term health? Uh, you know, a lot of that, I would. my first question would be, you know, what was your location? If you weren't in the smoke, you weren't in the product, we don't allow anybody in the smoke. Uh, that's that's what uh, our police department does in, in assisting us and keeping everyone out of that. Uh, so I can't speak to why you may or may not have a headache. It may be due to flu season or sinus allergies. It could be due to irritation. It, it really could. Uh, if it is due to irritation, then that would more than likely be from carbon monoxide, which at the low levels you can sometimes uh, have a headache after the fact. So that that would be my response on that. Did any firefighters have any uh, health complications with smoke inhalation? And then when you're dealing with smoke of that magnitude, do they have to take special precautions? Hmm. That's a good question. Sure that's a good question. Uh, we have probably the most intensive cancer prevention policy in the state of Arkansas. Uh, and we've worked with Little Rock on this because uh, they've had some firefighters uh, succumb to cancer at a, at a very young age. And uh, we have the gear that we supply our firefighters uh, is a new type of cancer prevention bunker gear. We do not allow our firefighters to remove their uh, respiratory protection uh, until our meter readings are below anything that OSHA would allow uh, on an eight hour day, 40, uh, 40 hours a week. So, no, we haven't experienced any problems with our firefighters. Can you talk about how the site is doing right now? Mm -hmm. Is your department still monitoring or have you turned things over? Yeah. As far as on the operation side, what we've done is we have, in my last visit uh, with uh, the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality, uh, we all feel confident in, co in, in the competence of uh, the cleanup firm. Uh, we have a plan. Uh, we've been working with them and assisting them uh, hand in hand. Uh, they're going to handle the cleanup. Uh, what we are going to continue to do though is as a secondary measure uh, from the city side, we have the capabilities. We're going to continue to test the stream downstream uh, just as kind of a secondary check, uh, just so we can feel confident that everything's going according to plan. Not that it will not. Uh, but it's, it's uh, you know, from the city's aspect, it's better that uh, we take those measures. Obviously, there's a barricade behind you. Uh -huh. Can you explain how long uh, this particular road or anything is expected to be closed or something? That I don't know. That would, that would just depend upon the amount of time to clean up. I know the tanks have to be removed. The street has to be cleaned up. Uh, so whatever, that's been turned over to them. And then yesterday you had said, yeah. Well, three of the four tanks collapsed. Now, what they are is they're silos, and, and, and I kind of got in trouble yesterday when you asked that question, and I threw out the, the polystyrene. And it, Well, nobody knows what that is, and, and my wife got on to me. Uh, in essence, what we're dealing with, if you've had a beanbag chair, the beads on the inside, that's what's in those silos, okay? And they're a two-stage silo, uh, but that's what they're filled with, those beads. And over time, those beads heat up, heat up they start to melt, they start to ignite, and then that weakens the silos themselves, and they collapse. Do you know the extent of the damage to the building at this point? No, that's going to be up to the investigators. So if you don't have any other questions, I, you know, we'll, okay, yeah. Obviously, the wind blowing this way, we can still kind of smell a little bit of the smoke. Is everything completely you're not, you're not smelling smoke, 
what what you're smelling is is the effect of the aroma of star foam and and even even on a typical day when they're in production you'll smell that you will but the, i can tell you that uh, not just on site but remotely throughout the city uh, we're, we're taking air air readings and uh, those will be sent off to the lab as well It, at least initially the first 24 hours and then after that uh, depending upon lab results which we don't expect anything because we're not coming up with anything. I know you said um, the ATF comes in when there is significant, significant monetary damage. Uh -huh. Do you have any of those numbers? Or now that, that, that would, that's going to take the completion of insurance and the investigation and that, uh, that can sometimes take up to months to get the true number. You know, uh, that's the, the public's health and safety is our number one concern. Uh, and, you know, we would like for them to know that if at any point in time that, you know, there's an exposure, you know, to danger, uh, that we will alert them. Then you mentioned you're monitoring a stream. Just <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's the name of it? Or I don't know. The name of the stream or how we're monitoring it? Uh, well, it's just... It's just a typical dry uh, runoff uh, ditch. And how do we monitor? Uh, we monitor uh, several different ways. Once again, what we're looking for is we're looking for hydrocarbons, benzene specifically, uh, and we're looking for visualization. We're looking for discoloration. We're looking for product. And we're not finding any of that. We didn't find any of that yesterday in working with our stormwater engineer. And then on top of that, the way we monitor it uh, is we have multiple uh, detectors. Uh, that use lasers, some use uh, what's called Raman technology, and a mass spectrometer that we run through, and then uh, we'll take those printouts, and as a secondary measure, we'll send them off to our support lab and get a secondary reading on that. And then what we've worked out with E3 is we'll match ours with theirs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, they're, they're, that's the electric department, they're working on their utility lines. Were they affected by this? They melted. Yeah. yeah. And broke. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Anyone else? No? That's it. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. We appreciate your interest.